<coughs> uh, <coughs> thank you very much for giving an opportunity to make a presentation in a top-notch conference. And <laughs> thank you very much for coming here. I'm uh, Hiroya Soyama, and I came from Japan. And I want to talk about information management. And please let me say about myself and our company. I've been a software engineer, and I'm a former OpenStack technical contributor, even though just only a few commits. And now, uh, <clears throat> I'm developing and maintaining our internal information management system for seven years. And I'm also a contributor of Stackstorm, uh, that is an automation DevOps open source software. And about our company, DMM.com, it mainly provides entertainment contents for domestic customers. And it engaged in a large variety of businesses on many areas. We are focusing on online video streaming services. And the total number of customers is over 39 million people. And the last year's sale, sales is over 305 billion yen. That is about $2.2 billion. And we operated those services using our on-premise environment. And this is summary of our infrastructure. Uh, much traffic is a feature of our environment compared to the middle scale of nodes. Uh, that's my short introduction. So let's get in the point. Uh, I'll show you how we have managed our infrastructure information and what we struggled with. Uh, this story is composed of three parts. At the beginning, uh, I'll show you how we have managed our information and uh, what problems were happened. And then I want to talk about an ideal way to manage information uh, in response to that problems. Uh, that way is SSOT. Uh, that stands for single source of truth in conclusion. But SSOT is not perfect solution. I mean, the flawless solution doesn't exist in the world, uh, but trade-off does. So I'll mention shortcomings of SSOT lastly. So the first topic, uh, I want to talk about our past thing. Uh, this lists part of the information to operate our entire infrastructure. Uh, basically, uh, we have used VMA solution to manage both physical and virtual machine storage and network uh, for production environment. I'm sorry for not to use the OpenStack. Uh, but <laughs> our entire infrastructure operation is not complete uh, with the VMA alone. Uh, it includes not only deploying and monitoring, but also the purchasing and delivering and repair control and also accounting and so on. And it requires to grab any kind of information to relate it to them. And we used the rack tables, uh, which is open source software uh, for data center asset management system to handle part of that information. Uh, rack table was a good solution uh, to manage physical appliances like computer nodes, network switches, uh, firewall, or such like that, and their port connection topology. But it wasn't good enough to manage that whole information. Uh, so we supplementally uh, used another way uh, that is one of the most famous information management system around the world. That is spreadsheet. <laughs> ah, thank you very much. I respected that <laughs> reaction. <laughs> uh, but it may sound ironic, uh, but I don't want to say it badly. I'd rather say that <laughs> it's stunning and <laughs> fabulous for user interface and also the functionality, and it grabs the heart of tons of people tightly. <laughs> but however, uh, speaking of manage managing a large variety of information, uh, we should use an alternative, I believe. So <clears throat> I want to describe what kind of problems were happened by them. The first problem is spurning other data sources uh, that have duplicated information with others. Uh, at the time, <clears throat> we had managed infrastructure information, uh, such as which server is equipped on a rack and where that rack is installed on the floor uh, using rack tables. And its information was opened to public, so everybody could access to it. 
Uh, once the staff started to think that, hmm, I want to manage the authentication information like password or such like that uh, for each appliances, but I don't want to store it to a public place. So hmm, let's make a spreadsheet that has confidential information. I think many people often do that to separate confidential information from a uh, public one. And this story doesn't end here. Another team staff that is referred to only this public data source also think about the same issue and created another data source uh, that has almost the same, same data in a different way. It may seem like a joke, uh, but it's a serious and it's not a laughing matter because they might be inconsistent. Uh, in the worst case, both of them uh, check and uh, check each item and correct them one by one. And this is a big loss. Of course, information management uh, came with the work to keep it consistent, but, manage, but managing multiple data source makes its cost double or more if another data, sim another data source is existed. Uh, furthermore, even though you work this task as hard as you can, the product value would be better and it would contribute to increase customer satisfaction. Again, to be clear, I believe this task is necessary for information management, but it's good enough to do it just for one time. So we were suffered from those problems. Uh, in summary, uh, information management without policy uh, result in its propagation, uh, spurning data source one after another. And those multiple data source requires much cost and it doesn't contribute to increase uh, product value and customer satisfaction. Uh, after here, uh, I explained the hardships of information management. Uh, from now, I'll tell you uh, how we tackled that problems. Uh, it's a rough conceptual diagram of ideal information management way for us. Uh, this means that data sources are gathered at one place, and that means SSOT, a single source of truth, and this idea is very, very simple, and <laughs> it's easy to achieve it uh, by gathering scattered information at one place but it's also easy to break apart because, as I said before, information data source flew around like a dust if you leave as it is. Uh, so you have to make a mechanism to bundle them into a system. Uh, that is a critical point of SSOT. And to realize it, data extensibility is quite necessary and it must be able to do it dynamically because information grows up day by day, and this kind of information tends to increase, but seldom to decreasing. And access control is quite important for SSOT. Uh, I need a feature that part of them are visible from a specific user, uh, who is belonging to team A in this case, uh, but some others, like accounting information, it will be invisible uh, from that user. Uh, ultimately, I believe that only two principles are sufficient for an information management system to become SSLT. Uh, first is dynamic exten extensibility, and the second is proper access control. Of course, an information management system needs various other functions, uh, like full text search and following, changing history, or such like that. But these two principles are essential for solving the problems that I mentioned. Uh, throughout our discussion, uh, we decided to develop an information management system to achieve it on our own. That is L1, and that is published as open source software in 2020. Uh, these are main concept of it. I believe this is not a software that human being have never been invented, but I could solve, uh, it could solve the problems that I said before. The reason why I show the very ordinary software in here, that's because I want to describe it as a basis for discussion. Uh, if someone suggests a better solution in response to my presentation, uh, it must be good for audience uh, and for me too. 
And I'm also happy when I can contribute to give you even a hint uh, to ease your problem uh, related with information management either way. And so I'll explain the concept of this software. Uh, this has two main data structures that handle all the information, that is model and entry. The model describes data schema, uh, which means what type of data it has. That is like a table of RDBMS, relational database management system, like a, uh, MySQL, SQLite, or such like that. A uh, model has zero or more attribute uh, that has type of value to accommodate. And the second main data structure is entry. And that describes instance. Entry consists on attribute that correspond to models one. Uh, each, models of, uh, each attribute of entry uh, has actual value based on its type. <clears throat> These are like record and field of RDBMS. That's an Air One data structure concept. And this is an example of model declaration. And each gray square, and he, here, is it? I'm not sure. Ah, yes, here, here, is a model. And blue square, that is in the each model, the here, here, and here, are uh, attribute. And the data type of attribute is very primitive like string, reference, boolean, or, and its array or dictionary. And then uh, you can make the data structure like that, uh, that will represent on-premise environment. And this shows entries uh, that corresponds to each model. Uh, each blue rectangle, those blue rectangles uh, represent entry, and the orange line uh, describes what entry refers to by reference typed attribute in each entries. Uh, from this data, the user can know that the server one uh, refers to, uh, server one is equipped on rack 102 and rack 102 is located, uh, uh, installed in uh, uh, floor 101, sorry, uh, uh, sorry, uh, floor. <laughs> One, well, three, thank you. <laughs> and this floor is located on the Tokyo site or such like that. And the point is, in this way, you can handle whole data, whole data uh, like a, a directed graph. That is quite easy to handle from computer program uh, to describe how SSOT pr uh, principles are achieved in this system. I'll take a closer look at this entry over server rack. And in this case, uh, the rack 102 entry uh, has attribute to know which floor is installed, amount of power supply, amount of power supply, and whether uh, it is available or not. And after that, suppose you want to add mm, load capacity information uh, is needed uh, for the rack entry, and then uh, you can do it by changing its model to add an attribute like this, and you can set the actual value on it. That's all. You can expand the information dynamically in this manner. And speaking of access control, it can be set for each model, entry, and attribute labels. In this case, team B member uh, can access all the information that is stored at Rack 102. And you can set, on, config, set its configuration to prohibit to access to some attributes from a specific role user. And you can also prohibit to access to whole entry from others. Uh, by using this role-based access control feature, uh, RBAC feature, uh, user don't have to create another data source, but just to add attribute or model and, uh, and set access control configuration. Uh, this shows uh, how many models, its attributes, and entries are increased uh, compared with the first release. Uh, as you can see, uh, both the type and the amount of information handled by Air One increased in the past three, three and a half years. And after releasing Air One internally in uh, November in 2019, uh, people no longer create other data sources. Uh, instead, uh, they store information to Air One and expand its model as needed. That was, the, that was our story leading to the SSOT. Uh, from now, I'll show you how we make, the, make it the most of. The first use case is application deployment. 
Uh, this deploy, uh, deployment system uses Stacksom uh, that is famous for an IFT workflow engine. Uh, at the beginning of deployment, it gets source code uh, from a GitHub repository. And before deploying it uh, to each node, it access to Aaron to get information where and how to do it. This design is aimed to divide policy from mechanism. To explain that, I'll take a closer look at them. Aaron has configuration information, uh, what nodes make up which node set. And for example, uh, this attribute, uh, okay, oh, lost. <laughs> Here, yes, the <laughs> red rectangles uh, represent uh, which nodes uh, consist on a specific node set to deploy, and the Stacksum can know where uh, there are three nodes on it. Then uh, Stacksum deploys that, that <laughs> uh, nodes according to the workflow. And Stacksum also get information how to deploy them, uh, such as environment variables of containers and passing parameters uh, for workflow. Uh, in this way, uh, it decouples policy from mechanism. Uh, it, makes them, uh, it makes them simple and increases flexibility and maintainability because if the policy and the mechanism are combined, you have to reproduce CI-CD processing whenever you change its configuration or setting information. In addition, it also decreasing the de uh, developing cost by being an SSOT. Uh, it means if there are multiple data sources, like this, uh, you have to implement features to get information by learning what kind of API endpoint is and uh, what response format is or uh, what parameters are uh, for each data sources. So however, if the data, uh, data management method is unified, you don't have to learn it <clears throat> again once you did, and you can do it the uh, same manner uh, with other data situation. So the next, yes, that's our one case. And the next use case is for data center management, uh, information management and we operate on-premise data center, and its information is managed by Air One, and this is a clipping picture of it. Uh, it shows uh, some server racks on a specific floor and installation status of equipment, and each rectangle, each uh, black rectangle represents a server rack, the 19 inch and the 42 unit regular uh, server rack, and the blue rectangle, uh, the blue rectangle uh, is the each racks uh, that shows uh, appliance uh, that have already been set on it. And the conversely, the white is empty and red represent the reserved space. So the, you can see the, ah, sorry, <laughs> I can see that. So the, you can see the white, yes, okay, the, the, almost the, that rug is almost empty. And in the middle line, maybe that is uh, reserved for the airflow or such like that. And if you click on a blue line, then you can see the information that is equipped in this space. So this feature is developed by requirements from the customer, but this is an exceptional mechanism of Air One. As I said before, all Air One information is composed by entry, and all entry has on URL, URL end, end point, to respond its information. For example, once user access to the Rack 102 entries and the point, like this. Then Aaron responds information only associated with its entry, like this. So basically, uh, Aaron responds information for one entry per one access. Uh, so this principle is necessary uh, to be in a general purpose information management system. However, uh, this basic mechanism is hard to show this page. Uh, this is a creeping feature shown before uh, because uh, this includes each rack entries uh, on a floor and also appliances entries in each racks. Uh, it shows them all at once. So this, ag this is against the one access and one entry principle. So we made another mechanism to achieve it. Uh, this enables to customize view processing according to the structure of user-defined model. We can call it a custom view. By using this, 
User can get information from multiple entries uh, when user accesses to an endpoint that custom views is configured. Uh, in this case, uh, when user accesses to the floor 101 entries and uh, floor 101 entries endpoint, uh, this custom view get information from its entry and also server racks entries that refers to it. Uh, it could be identified uh, by following their reference graph data structure in internally. Uh, in this way, user can get overview view page like this. Uh, at the time, users realize that the more information is gathered at SSOT, the more it will be useful by connecting related information using the custom view feature. Before long, Many other custom views like IP address management and port, physical port and its connection management features were created and the users are actively added their own information to the Air1 and also expanded uh, models. Uh, since then, SSOT movement was accelerated. Uh, before that, we were struggled with information disposal and uh, spanning, uh, uh, spanning around, uh, but now, uh, it feels like the information is gravitated uh, to the air one on its own. Uh, that was our story, that was our uh, SSOT story. Uh, from now, I want to see other companies' activity uh, from public information uh, that seems to be related with SSOT. The one is uh, Roboton, uh, which is published by Meta, Facebook. Uh, it manages the network lifecycle uh, from, de from design, configuration, deployment, and monitoring. Uh, those status is managed by SSOT, uh, data, SSOT data source, uh, which is called FVNet. And another one is MALT by Google. Uh, it's a large-scale network management technology uh, from intercontinental communications uh, to data centers. Uh, it doesn't mention about SSOT itself, uh, but it's, it seems to work uh, using a single, single topology database. Uh, like these examples, uh, managing information in a single source uh, brings benefits uh, to infrastructure operation, I think. Until here, uh, I talked about only the positive aspect of SSOT, uh, but according to the SAGE, uh, there is no silver blade. So I'll mention about negative aspects of SSOT on the basis of our experience at last. Uh, one day, I received a claim uh, from our operational team staff. Hey, I can't update our own VM entry, and this, mu this system must be wrong, uh, he said. Uh, until, he until then, uh, we managed virtual machine information by this model. Uh, but at the, at the moment, uh, accounting team staff uh, changed its model uh, to set status attributes uh, as mandatory one uh, because they have, they have been worried about the virtual machine entries of empty attrib status attribute. Uh, they can't know whether uh, it's actually used and deserved with billing target or not. So to prevent to its omission, the staff decided to set it uh, to prohibit to update and create its entry without setting status attribute. This decision is very reasonable, and this information should be managed like this. But this staff should understand that all the information that is managed in the SSOT is shared with others. So it's necessary to coordinate with other, other users about changing its model in the SSOT environment. So if you ask me that, okay, the model shouldn't be changed, right? I'd say neither, uh, because uh, sometimes it should be better to actively change models. I'll show the case of it. The right side is a model structure related with network appliance, and the left side shows its entry uh, that are initially registered. That model was registered, uh, uh, designed uh, to manage information that is just equipped on a server rack and entries are only assumed uh, for network switch and routers uh, at a time. But before long, a large variety of appliances information started to be registered at Air1, like physical and virtual load balancer and a firewall. And then it also needed to save 
other information, such as ACL policy for firewall or uh, virtual server information uh, for load balancer. But those informations are irrelevant uh, for each other. If these attributes are added in each model, uh, it will be more comp complicated like this. Uh, they are color coded here for convenience, but it must be difficult to tell whether, whether ones are actually used and which ones are not at a glance. So, and those attributes are never being used by original network appliances. And adding attribute without maintaining and coordination complicates model and increase it, its management cost. Uh, in this case, uh, instead of adding various attributes uh, to the model, it's better to divide models uh, for each purposes like this. Then each of, them, each of their maintainability uh, could be increased. Uh, this situation gave me a lesson uh, that the initially defined model and its purpose must be changed by growing number of information. And because information is naturally increased and unexpectedly, that we have to keep organizing and maintaining it, not to get, not to get it messy. And that's all. Uh, I've introduced about the information management experience and SSOT. And speaking of the best way to manage information, I don't know uh, the best way, and I don't think there is not such a thing, because all individual solutions have trade-off. But as far as inf infrastructure information management is concerned, I dare to say that SSOT is the best way, uh, even considering its uh, disadvantages, uh, because it could not only increase flexibility and maintainability uh, for infrastructure operation and information, uh, but also decrease operational, soft operational and software developing cost. And please tell me uh, if you have any ideas uh, for information management, and uh, if you want to make a discussion about, about it, I'm happy to do that. And please feel free to ask me. Uh, I'd go anywhere, wherever you want. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ah, do you have any questions? And I ask you a favor. <laughs> Please, if you never mind, please push the star button <laughs> of this link. During some question, it will be happening. Uh, I don't have a question, but yes. I, I maybe have something to show you. Oh, thank you. Uh, afterwards, we can, uh, I can show you an example of how we do it. Ah, thank you very much. Uh, please, never mind, please, never mind, please tell me the name of the software. Ah, I see. Ah, thank you very much. Okay. Is it uh, open source software? Not yet. Ah, I see. But uh, I think you will find it interesting. Ah, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. Is, is it okay to finish up? <laughs>